worthy to receive glory. Oh, you are worthy to receive honor. There is absolutely none like you, Lord God. You are the creator of all things and you created all things and you make all things well and therefore we lift up holy hands unto you and we magnify you. We exalt you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We acknowledge, Lord God, that you are the Lord God that healeth us. That you are the Lord that keepeth us. That you are the Lord that soothes our mind, mends our broken heart. You are the Lord that keepeth us, Lord God, in perfect peace. We said all we have to do is keep our minds stayed on you. And for this, we give you glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. From the rising of the sun till the going down of sand, God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the very essence of our lives. He is the hope of our glory. He is the soon to come King of kings and the mighty Lord. Time is this. He says, as we um, 
in the world, yes, yes, there are some things going on in the world. He says there are wars, yes, rumors of wars. He says there are pestilences. He says COVID is still in the lane, not like he doesn't know it. He says unusual weather patterns and conditions are happening. There are shortages in the marketplace. Escalating prices all over, not just America, the world. He says mankind, I'm going to take my time here, mankind is loving pleasures of the world more than me. He says the love of man, mankind, is growing cold. The love of man to, is growing so cold that there is no regard for human life. He said, yes, I know about the random acts of senseless violence. But, but God, God says, be encouraged. For after all, I am the Lord, your God. He said, for every person that's accepted Jesus and made him your Savior, he said, I am your God. I am with you. I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I'll be with you forever. So in spite of these things, he says, as long as you continue to trust in my love for you, None of these things will harm you. It's so, yeah, they'll present themselves to you. Uh -huh. But when you trust in my love for you, you will know they didn't come from me. You will know that these things did not come from a loving father. He said, just take a moment and think about a natural family. Any family, it, you may have had a mother, a father, an aunt, a, or a cousin, a friend, someone that you could go to and just feel safe. He says, and I am greater than any mama, any daddy, any aunt, uncle, any friend. I am greater. Not only am I greater, I know exactly what you have need of even before you know that you have need of it. For example, I have already told you in my word that these things are going to happen. They did not take me by surprise. So let me just remind you that the earth is mine, the Lord is saying. The Lord, hallelujah, the fullness thereof. He said the world and all they that dwell in it. So nothing, none of these things by any means has taken me by surprise. Therefore, I know that there is an appointed time when all of this is going to end. But in the meantime, I want you to be encouraged and trust in the truth, the truth that does not change, that I love my people. And sometimes he says, when we say, I love my people, we may think, oh yeah, yeah, he loves the church. But no, he's saying, he's talking to you today. Each and every individual under the sound of my voice that has set, except even if you haven't accepted Jesus yet as your Savior, God says, I love you. And my love never fails. And as long as you trust in my love for you, you will reap the benefits of what my love provides for you. My love takes care of you just because you are mine, not because of any other thing. This morning, he says, just take your mind away from how you are loving God and how you are striving to love God. I just want to pour my love out upon you. I want to let you know that I love you, that I love you, that I love you. As a father, I love you. Therefore, I will keep you safe and sound from all hurt, harm, and danger. I love you with the love of a father. I 
am your fortress. Fortress. I learned from Elder Brown what a fortress means. It means like a military fort. No one just forces in on a fortress. He said, not only that, I am your, your refuge. I am your place of safety. Yes, it's okay to know what's going on in the world, to be aware of what's going on in the world, but that's not where the focus needs to be. He says the focus needs to be just on, I love you just because you are you. No other reason, I love you, and one thing that tells you I love you, I handpicked you from the beginning. You did not choose me. I chose you. Think about it. Think about it. Whatever you were doing in the land prior to accepting Jesus as your Savior, it wasn't too hard for him. He says it is not too hard today. Just trust in his love. Trust in his love. He says be encouraged knowing, knowing this dispensation of time. He says we have to know something. Know that his love, his love for us as individuals never fails. His love, his love. Yes, we have love of friends, love of families, but he wants to let us know that his love is far greater than any of them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, keep your eyes focused on the truth that I love you. Because if you keep your eyes, your focus, your mind and your heart and your focus on what's happening in the world, he says what will happen is you will begin to become discouraged, you will become weary, and you will become, and you will faint. The word said faint in the vanity of your mind. He said, but if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll hold you steady. Because when those feelings of inadequacies, when those feelings of, Lord, what's going on? When those feelings of, my God, hallelujah, all oh, hell is breaking loose. He says, when those thoughts rush you like a mighty rushing wind, you will be able to just stand still and say, God, yes, I feel this way. Yes, I see these things happening in the land of the living, but one thing I do know is that you love me. And because you love me, you are not gonna be let, let me be taken unfair advantage of. You're gonna hold me in the palm of your hands. You're gonna watch over me. Like a mother hen watches over her chicks. And for those of you who don't know about a mother hen, Watch it over her chicks. You know chickens are chickens. They're not known to fight. The hen is not known to fight. But I guarantee you, if you run up on a hen who's taking care of her chicks, you are in for a fight. God said, I watch over you like a mother hen watches over her chicks. Know that I love you. Know that I love you. Even when you stumble and fall, even when you mess up, know that I love you. And when you stumble and fall, know without a shadow of doubt that I, your God, will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. I'll never let you reach bottom. I'm always there. Always talking to you. Always encouraging you. Always telling you, it's okay. Get up. You can do it. Get up. You were created in my image. Wonderfully and fearfully are you made and that your soul knows right well. And then he says, you just begin to praise him. The psalmist said, I praise your Lord God because I am wonderfully and fearfully made that my soul knows very well. 
I will put my trust in you. He said, God says, that's how he gets your trust when you just know he loves you. Not because of anything that you've done, not because of anything that you haven't done. He just loves you. He says, keep in mind that he is love after all. So he doesn't know how to do anything else but love you. He doesn't know how to do anything but encourage you. He doesn't know anything else that he said, and I really don't want to know anything else. That's how important each and every one of you is to the Father. Hallelujah. 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 He says, be encouraged. Knowing that my love never fails. If you go to 1 Corinthians 13 and 8, it says charity, which is love, never fails. But wherever there be prophecies, they shall fail. Wherever there be tongues, they shall fail. Wherever there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And he gave an example of what that might mean in today's time. He says in today's time, the people who are focusing in on what's going on in the world, rather than focusing in, and he's talking about Christians, instead of focusing in on the truth that he loves them, he says those people who used to preach my word, all of a sudden it begins to become a burden and they begin to walk away and they begin to walk away because they're not trusting in my love for them. But if they trust in my love for them, no matter what, they'll keep going. He says where there were hope, spirit-filled people, speaking in tongue people, they get their focus on the world and what's happening in the world rather than my love for them. And they find themselves getting quiet. Mm. They find themselves no longer filled with the zeal to pray. Where at one point, they couldn't wait to get to the throne room. At one point, but they took their eyes off the truth that I love them, I love them, and guess what? Their voice dried up. He says, wherever there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. He says, there are born again believers that know a lot about me. They know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They can quote scriptures backwards and forward. He said, but well, when they took their eyes and their focus and their mind and their heart off of the love of the Father, off of the truth that I love them, all of those scriptures became naught in their lives. All of a sudden, they couldn't see. All of a sudden, instead of praying and praising and worshiping and magnifying the Lord and teaching others about the goodness of the Lord, they find themselves somewhere in a corner, hallelujah, thinking about giving up, thinking about, in some instances, committing suicide. He said the rate, suicidal rate, is higher in the land than it's ever been. But that's because the people took their eyes off the truth that I love them. I love them. I am their God. Hallelujah. I created them. I am the one who observed them being formed in their mother's womb. I am the one who has called them for such a time as this. If I had not said it was necessary, thought it was necessary for them to be in this, this dispensation of time, he says we wouldn't be here. We, but since we are, glory to God. Hallelujah. He said be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. This is another thing he wants to tell his people. Don't judge yourself by your mess up. Huh? 
That even when you stumble and fall, his love covers a multitude of sin. Don't be discouraged. And some may say, well, what does that mean? Does that mean that I continue to sin? God said, I say that, God forbid. God forbid. God says, but he wants you to keep in mind, since he created us, he knows our down settings, he knows our uprisings, he knows our thoughts from afar. Since he knows us that well, he knows exactly what it takes to free us from whatever situation that continues to cause us to stumble and fall. But keep in mind, even when we stumble and fall, we're not utterly cast in. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is upholding us with his right hand of righteousness. He said, be encouraged. Don't be afraid. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am strengthening you. I am helping you. Yes, I am hold, upholding you with my right hand of righteousness. In 1 Timothy 1 and 7, he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound, a sound, a sound mind. He says, don't be afraid to go out in the highways and the byways and do what's necessary for you to live a normal life. Just trust in my love for you. My love will keep you. My love will protect you. Love never fails. That is, God's love never fails. He says, don't be afraid to send your, your loved ones out in the highways and the byways. And he told me to say this, especially children. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid to send your children out. Know that God loves them with an unconditional love. Know that God has caused angels to be in camp around about them to protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. He said, fear not. I will keep them safe. Fear not. Fear not. It's good to have the police. Yes, it's good. But he says he's greater than the police. Hallelujah. 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 He says, keep in mind that his love has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And as we allow his love and appreciate his love that he has for us to take authority in our lives, to be first priority in our lives, he said, all fear will be cast out. He says, perfect love cast out all fear. Oh, yes. He says, fearful thoughts will come to you. But when you focus on his love for you, they won't be able to take control of your life. All you need to do, he says, is just begin to acknowledge. You know, Father, I'm feeling a little antsy right now. God, I'm feeling, feeling a little bit fearful right now. But one thing I do know is that you love me. I do know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I do know that as you delivered your Israelites, as you led them through on the dry land, the red parted, the red sea, I do know you've not changed. You'll do the same thing for me and my family. You will keep us. Jesus. Hallelujah. You will not allow us to be destroyed by the hands of the enemy. Jesus. Hallelujah. This much I do know, Lord. Hallelujah. And he says as you begin to give him thanks, like David did. <coughs> David. David am amazes me. David would go to the Lord. He would be so burdened down. He would be so Say it, oh God, have mercy. My enemies have taken me. But then, after he got through, 
He came to himself. And God said, that's what we need to do sometimes. It's okay to acknowledge to God how you're feeling. As long as you understand, feelings will change. But the word of God will remain the same. He says, it's the same yesterday. It's the same today. And it's going to be the same tomorrow. He says his love is from generation to generation to all nations and all people. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid. Fear not. Hallelujah. He said be confident in God's love. When those lying thoughts come and they tell you, you know what? You're just not going to make it. You know what? I just don't know what's going on in the world. You know what? My child is somewhere across the ocean. I just don't know. I just don't know. He said, no, change that. Change that. You might want to, in this case also, acknowledge to God, God, I'm feeling a little shaky here. God, my confidence is a little bit shaky here. But one thing I do know is nothing shaky about you. One thing I do know is that you are an awesome God. Yeah. One thing I do know is you are an all-consuming fire. One thing I do know is that fire goes before the enemy, yeah. consuming, he goes before you, consuming up your enemy. That I know, and I know right well. God, I know when I was dead in sin, you found me, and you saved me, and you delivered me. One thing I do know, Lord, is that you love me. And in this, I'll be confident. Hallelujah. I will remain confident in the truth that you love me. I will remain in the confidence Remain confident in the truth that your love will see to it that I have everything I need here on earth. Hallelujah. 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 Lastly, at least for today, a little short message, a little brief message, I guess. He says, hold fast to this basic truth. John 3.16. Yes, he says it's very simple and sometimes we run past it. That God so loved the world, the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And he follows, follows up with 17 to say that he sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through his son Jesus might be saved. He said instead of coming to when we come together, well, when we come together and in a group, don't be busy talking about the world or what's going on in the world. And if you do, then one of you just begin to talk about my love, to say, yes, yeah, sister or brother, I know that's going on in the world. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yeah, I know it is sad. All these tragedies, it, it really is sad. But one thing I do know is God is able to turn those people's mourning into dancing. He said, take it. Take it. Change the conversation. Change it by focusing in on my love for you. One thing, I thought it was short, but my time is running out. One other thing that I want to say that God gave me is, he says, listen, politicians, doctors, lawyers, worldly experts can calculate and can predict, but they are basing their predictions and calculations on facts and that we know facts change but he never changes. He never changes. He says, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he knows the thoughts that he has towards us. Thoughts of peace and an expected end, and that will not change. 
he says one thing that we need to know is that there is coming a day. A day when God is going to come back and he's going to joy, capture us up, rapture us up with him into heaven. One day and there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more shortages, no more escalating prices. There'll be no more worries. He said, but until that day, until that day, because he hasn't come yet, until that day, continue to be encouraged. Continue to live understanding and knowing that God loves you, that God loves you, that God loves you. This is the point where we come to say, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, now is the time. Now is the time. All you have to do, according to Romans 10 and 9, is if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Just confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. Not hard, very easy. Is there anyone in our midst who wants to accept him and save him? If not, I say to you in closing, stay encouraged. Know that God loves you. Amen.